United States, as you said, did not give up Okinawa, even after it stopped the occupation of the rest of Japan, it did not stop the occupation of Okinawa. And so the United States stayed there for another 20 plus years before it finally left. And the US view of it was that Okinawa was essential for American security. And the way the United States defined security was that the United States was going to dominate the world during the Cold War. Uh, and so uh, the, when the United States engaged in other wars, whether it was Vietnam or later uh, first Iraq war or the second invasion of Iraq or Afghanistan or Libya, the American troops always leave from Okinawa. So Okinawa is crucial in that regard. And Okinawa has been treated by the United States with contempt. And so the United States, more than 70% of American military installations in Japan are in Okinawa. Uh, Okinawa is not even, is barely one half of 1% of the land mass of Japan, but it has 70% of America's military installations. 20% of Okinawa is controlled by the United States in its military bases, even now. Uh, more than ha half of America's troops in Japan are in Okinawa. So the United States has treated Okinawa contemptuously ever since. And uh, even now, with all those bases, the United States still is building more bases as the people of Okinawa have known and resisted and suffered as the US tries to move the Marine base in Futenma to relocate it in Hinoko. And to, in Ora Bay, I've been there. It's beautiful, it's pristine, it's natural, and the US doesn't care. Even though the people of Okinawa have fought against this, resisted this for more than a decade, every day fought against this, overwhelmingly opposed in election after election, referendum after referendum, have opposed the building of this base. The United States insists that this base must be built and the Japanese government insists also. There was some resistance by the Japanese government and that was my friend Hatoyama-san. When he was prime minister, he, he opposed the US building that base. And what happened to him Barack Obama effectively destroyed him and destroyed the Japan Democratic Party. And so we're stuck again with the LDP. And whether it's Abe or Suga, they all insist on building that base in Japan. And they try to bribe the people of Okinawa with special benefits if they'll allow that base to be built. But the people of Okinawa continue to resist and what it's doing to the bay, what it's doing to nature, what it's doing to endangered species is just an outrage. So from an environmental standpoint, what's going on is criminal. From a human and moral standpoint, what's going on is equally criminal. But the United States wants Okinawa. The United States, when, when I was there in 2014, I went in 2013 with uh, Oliver Stone, my colleague who I wrote Untold History of the United States with, and we did our documentaries together. We did, when Oliver came with me to Hiroshima and Nagasaki in Tokyo, we then came to Okinawa. And then I came back again the next summer with Sadako Nurematsu and with uh, Joseph Gerson. And we met that time with Al Magleby. And Al Magleby was the US Consul General to the highest American official in Okinawa. And I asked him, said, why is Okinawa so important to you? And he said, Okinawa is the most strategically located piece of real estate that we have. And I asked him, in what sense is that? And he said, it's geographic proximity to Taiwan, to China and to North Korea. So it's crucial in the context of America's plans 
to dominate the Pacific. We know about the American empire. The United States still has about 800 bases around the world. Our main rival, China, has three bases. But, uh, so, but the United States insists on maintaining this empire of bases. And Okinawa is crucial in that regard. And so uh, the United States, especially in 2011, when Hillary Clinton, as Secretary of State, writes an article in Foreign Policy Magazine titled, America's Pacific Century, America's Pacific Century, what hubris, what chutzpah, and saying that the United States should pivot away from the Middle East and those ridiculous wars in Afghanistan and Iraq and focus on China. Well, that was 10 years ago. And we see now in this meeting that just take place the G7 and the EU summit and the NATO summit and the American defense doctrine they're all talking about China as being America's great adversary on the world stage. And so the United States is concocting plans effectively to confront China politically, economically, and militarily. And so uh, we see this happening over the South China Sea, over the Senkaku de Ayu Island, but especially right now over Taiwan very, very dangerous things going on that maybe we can discuss in a few minutes. But for that, for the U.S. to carry out that strategy, it believes it needs Okinawa and those bases in Okinawa and the new base in Hinoko. And it's going to ignore the will and the wishes of the people of Okinawa. And it, there's, there's all this talk now. Biden is over there in Europe talking about this is a battle of democracy versus autocracy. Well, the people of Okinawa know that there is no democracy where Okinawa is concerned. And the people of Okinawa has voiced their opposition to this base over and over and over again. And the United States simply ignores it, overrides their will and tries to ram this new base down their throats. Well, I think all the bases should be closed in Okinawa. And I think the bases around the world should be closed. We should be taking a different approach to solving the world's problems.